Okay, so this is totally dry, and we are going to figure out where we want to put that in Lighten, which I love. So I'm probably just going to put it right over top um, of that ribbon. I did extend the ribbon. The ribbon, for some reason, was like hanging out mid-space. Didn't make any sense. <laughs> okay, and then um, with your, uh, not graphite, charcoal, you want to have some um, chamois or chamois. I, I usually buy it and just scrape big pieces like this and cut it up if I'm doing a small project, right? But it really helps, especially with charcoal, um, so that you don't get out of control with charcoal, okay? And I'm just going to grab one of these little guys, and I usually break them off so that I am not completely out of control and see what's already happening. Yes. That is what I'm going to be covered with. Just watch. All right, so I have decided to do this bowl. So I'm just going to go in and give myself quite a bit darker around the edge of the bowl. And one of the ways that we can use charcoal is to set it with um, gesso. You can set it easily with gesso and a brush. Um, if you feel like it's too dark, which I don't think it's too dark, I actually kind of like it, you can go in with your chamois and just use your finger and blend it in and most of it's going to come right off, I promise. So if you get too much or if you get it on your fingers, look, it's like magic, right? So if you're nervous at all or if you've got way too much, look, you can just take it right off. Right? Simple, simple. It will just give you a little bit of leftover. But where I don't want to take all of it off, I want to kind of dig in and give myself some of that deeper in there. As you can use the oil from your fingers, um, actually makes it stick better than the chamois. The chamois will pull it off, remember? But the oil from your fingers, can you believe that? We have so much oil in our fingers. We'll set it as will just a hint of gesso. If you want to grab out your gesso and use a brush that's appropriate for gesso. We don't want to use watercolor brushes on our gesso. Okay, here's just a tiny hint of white gesso. And I can just go in and it will turn it gray. It is going to turn it more gray, but it will set it in there so it's not going to move. And it will be totally appropriate for our little project because our little berry bowl doesn't need to be black, nor does it need to be pure white. It's going to be a lot more interesting with kind of a mix of colors. Okay, and if you feel like you've gotten your graphite way out here, <laughs> which is what you do when you're moving it with your fingers, um, just use your little chamois, okay? Darken and set it with gesso. Set it with, you can actually set it with a little bit of water too. But the gesso, I think, gives it a depth. Well, let's not use that brush. Let's not use that little liner brush with gesso. Let's use this thing. Let me rinse it out here. We're just going to work that charcoal into that gesso and into our little watercolor bowl. Just like that. Look at that. Look how much more interesting that has already become. Just working that charcoal in. Black adds such drama, doesn't it? Drama. Drama. It's gorgeous. Okay, so you can actually keep adding layers until you get just what you want. Add a little bit more just so, a little bit more water, and 
The fun part about that too is that now it's not going to be all over my hands if I accidentally bump it. Okay, the water and the gesso kind of set it in there so we don't have to worry so much about that. All right, and I have kind of colored in some more berries because I don't think we are quite there yet with our berries. So I'm going to add another color blue, this more beautiful ocean blue right here. This is a mix of three colors, so I'll have to look and see what, <laughs> what that is. But let's add just a hint of that to our Payne's Gray and add more depth to our berries. Okay, this extra color is really going to make it so much more interesting. It's most of the way dry here. And because this is not a watercolor, this is just an ink. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to put some in the bottom of my berry bowl here. And that is going to make a gorgeous beetle. That's all I have to say. Gorgeous. Okay, let's get another brush. Let's use this baby bitty brush here. And my little bit of ink. And I'm just going to go in and add light and interest and variety. And that really does punch it up. It already looks more interesting. It's much more three-dimensional now with that extra blue in there. Gorgeous! That's gorgeous. Tons of extra color. Okay, and then this down here, we can actually add... It just seems like we need a little bit of greenery in here. Maybe we'll just add a couple little... Green leafies in here, you think? Maybe to kind of bring it out a little bit. I think that would be pretty. Maybe just a hint of crazy green. Let's see. Let's just do kind of a more true green with some of this limey green. And with our small liner brush here. Only because we can add kind of squiggles and pretty tufts of things with this liner brush. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Okay, let's let that dry. And while we're doing that, I'm going to mess with that gold leaf. And see if we can get some of that gold leaf set into this ribbon. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so I built up a couple of berries up here and down in here with some darker color just to kind of uh, make it look better. You just have to kind of work with your art like over and over again, don't you? <laughs> okay, so what we have is an adhesive size which is going to lay down a layer of something and it says on here Adequate ventilation. Good night. That means I have to open my windows. Hold on. Thankfully, I have enormous windows, so that will help. And then this just peels off very, very carefully into my hand and then onto the art. Look at that gorgeous stuff. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So, and it also looks like I have a sealer that came with it. So we are going to just use this. Oh, I was hoping it had a brush on it. No. Oh yeah, this smells great. <laughs> I'm going to be higher than a kite in about two minutes. All right. Well, then I will just apologize ahead of time. How about that? I apologize ahead of time for anything I may say in two minutes. <laughs> All right, let's open this. And I'm just going to use a very fine brush that I use for messy things, like glue. And 
I'm going to print some of this adhesive size sizing sounds like we're doing something with quilting let's get this on here yeah this is going to be gorgeous okay so this is going to bump this color right up and then if I'm smart I am going to just add a hint of it as it goes everywhere which it's going to do because it's very fragile Okay, so with delicate hands and a pure heart. <laughs> oh my gosh, my poor hands are shaking. They're like, how do we do this? All right, so we're just, <laughs> just going to go for it. Seriously, we're going to go for it. Now, if you've taken a class with me before, you'll know I typically do not... Um, shy away from new things so this is so like in my little basket of tricks here to do this on the fly this is awesome okay now this for sure with this gold leaf this is totally going in my kitchen window you know why because the here we need a tool here because the sun is going to hit this and it's going to be absolutely something else going to be gorgeous. So we're making it look like this ribbon has a tiny bit of gold to it. Right? That's what we were going for. All right. So that does look a little bit messy, but you know what? This little brush is working pretty well to pick up random bits. And because I put down some just random sizing, random adhesive, and that bowl of berries, those are sticking as well. They're a little bit bigger than I thought they would be They're sticking, but you know what? Look, we can just use the back of this brush and kind of break them up into much smaller, tiny bits. Okay, so I typically finish um, my projects in three ways. I like to go over things with a bit of pencil. If I want a softer, softer line, a softer line. <laughs> yeah, that's a new, that's like a new art term, right? A new softer line. So, and also too, if I am not quite sure and I think I might want to erase something, you know what I mean? Like if I like the idea of something and I'm trying it out, whatever, you can still get away with erasing um, on top of watercolor, just not once it's wet, you know, it sets. So uh, typically for my little pieces of art, I like to use a um, water and fade proof pigment pen. Okay, this one is a Unipin. Okay, and it's very fine and it's a one. I use 0.5s or I mean 0.05s. I use twos for a little bit bigger work. But this is actually a number one, which I recommend. I love little number ones. They're a little bit harder to come by though, these Unipens, but they do leave a really beautiful little look. And it's very illustrative. You for sure do not have to even use a pen. This little piece looks really pretty, even just as it is. But I do like to add that little extra bit of flourish to my work. So, and this works great with watercolor. Now I'm going to be careful around this um, gold because it has adhesive, right? And I'm also going to be kind of careful around the blue ink as well. Because I'm not sure what that will do to my nib of my pen. And they're expensive to buy new pens and I don't like them when they don't work anymore. You know how that is. So, and we really don't even need to add much detail. I mean, I'm just adding just a hint, an idea of detail. Nothing more than that. Like it's just the idea of it. Way too much berry in here. Oh my gosh, it is just pouring out, pouring out. Okay, little tiny bits of detail in there, just so it looks like a Janelle piece. I do love 
that little hint of detail. And let's scroll it right across the, or let's just work in and lighten right across the bottom. That was my inspiration, was the word on that stencil. Isn't that fun how inspiration just comes from so many different sources, right? Yes, it does. Okay, so what I have um, to finish then, I'm just, you can actually use um, white pen, which I have tons of white pens. And that one does not work. So we're gonna actually use the white ink just to show you that you, you're not limited. Okay, a lot of times I will just use um, a white acrylic paint mixed with water on watercolor. Yes, I will. This is white ink. This is just a dark Dr. Martin white ink. And I'm going to use my tiniest, tiniest little liner brush right here, which I love. Everyone should have one of these tiny, tiny things. And I'm going to give myself a hint of highlight. on my spoon here. It's covered up too much. Hint of highlight on my ribbon where it's kind of faded out. Because I put so much gold in there. So we're just layering it up. We're being mixed media artists with this, right? So straight up white ink. Same thing as using a white pen. Okay, same exact thing. No difference. Let's just get in here and add just a hint of highlight to some of these darker areas. It comes with a dropper. So I'm just going to actually use a dropper that's not full. I've just dipped it in the paint, but it's not full of paint. Okay, and I'm going to just randomly drop a bunch of ink on here. This is the same, you've, if you've taken classes from me, I use a Sharpie pen, pushing down the nib and get a lot of paint out or I will just spray it with some acrylic paint, some white acrylic paint mixed with water and a hard brush, okay? That is so Janelle, that is so me. Look at that, pretty, pretty, pretty. That turned out so pretty. I just love it, love it, love it. With all that pretty gold. And once this dries, um, you'll see, it turns out so pretty. Okay, all right, I'm gonna set this in the window to dry.